Well, another Banggood kit um, from Deep Crete. Um, and um, I can't remember what it was. So there's a Music FFT display kit. I've got a feeling it's probably on these um, music um, equaliser type things. And a load of LEDs on them. Looks like there's a whole bunch of LEDs in there. That's the case and the hardware for the case. That. And I think this is going to be lots and lots of soldering of LEDs. Let's have a look. We have got printed instructions. Let's have a look at those. Okay. Yes. Let's uh, bring this up. So we have installation instructions for LED music level display kit. Try to choose soldering tin wire with a diameter of 0.6 millimeters and 63% content of soldering tin. And select the pointed or knife edge electric soldering iron with 20 watts to 30 watts for welding. Okay, I will. Um, okay, so some instructions there on where or how to solder. Looks like there's some uh, surface mount components going on there as well. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, this is the rear of the board, which has got a speaker. Uh, we've got a chip in there. 100 microfarad cap. Um, electrolytic, that is, and a whole load of resistors by the looks of things. 101, is it 100, 100 ohms, is it? And uh, there's the schematic, for those who want to bother reading it. Those are presumably are all the LED positions. Anything on to the side? No. So let's have a look at the um, contents of the pack. So what we have here. There's the speaker. Uh, a couple of wires. connect up to it. Uh, we have an audio to USB lead. I imagine that's power jack. Uh, we have some blue LEDs, tiny ones, very tiny ones, and a green and a red. So we've got the RGB range there. We also have another packet which has got, and now there's a headphone splitter there. I imagine that's for audio input somewhere down the line. And we have got a couple of um, surface mount electrolytic capacitors, um, some surface mount capacitors, um, we've got a little surface mount there, I don't know what that will be, whether it will be conscious of the lighting is absolutely rubbish, see if that helps a bit I that's going to I will have a look at all these bits and pieces when I get them out at any rate uh, push to make switch and we have a mini USB connector which is interesting because they haven't provided a mini USB socket, so that's interesting um, and then we have the board itself which we saw the uh, layout of. You can see where all the resistors go and so on and so forth. And that's where one mounts the speaker. I don't know if there's a, a sticker or something with the speaker to uh, mount it, but um, it might be that the case will hold it in place, which is probably more likely. And then this is where the wacky world of uh, all those LEDs that's the right way up there. So lots of LEDs. Um, well, I'm just trying to see whether the schematic tells us where the different coloured LEDs go, but um, uh, I'll have to have a look into that. 
any rate, that's the content of the kit. Um, so, the next thing to do is to uh, get soldering probably with the LEDs that I would think would be the uh, favourite place to start. I'm just having a look at the board for orientation. You can see that um, one end is slightly squared off, or rounded off rather, and there's a square end and a rounded end, so I'd imagine that will uh, indicate which end is negative and which end is positive, but which is which, I don't know. I shall have to look at the instructions. So there we go, that's the initial look of the uh, bits and pieces, and um, I'll get myself set up with the soldering iron and uh, yeah, start putting this uh, beast together. Right, okay, back onto the uh, LED music level display kit. Um, and the next stage is to decide what to do with the LEDs. So the instructions show me that the orientation of the LEDs, depending on the type of LED you've got, so I'm, I haven't looked at the LEDs yet, but I guess these markings will be on them. Um, it shows you the orientation or the polarity plus minus and also the uh, orientation on the board itself. So you can see there that the um, rounded end is the minus. So um, that side will be minus and that side will be plus. The other thing is that we have got green, red and blue LEDs and the idea is that you have rows uh, or columns of the same colour LED so I think what I will do is see, well, what it says here uh, during layout of chip LED the same row or column should be the same colour and there should be no multicolour in the same row or column. In other words, you either have all of that the same colour or all of that the same colour. So what I'm tempted to do is to go the uh, to actually treat it as columns of the same colour as opposed to rows. So, I don't know, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, that sort of thing. Um, so, let's start off there for the red. And let's have a look at a red LED. And these are, wow, these are tiny. These are apocalyptically tiny. Um, okay, well, they are what they are. And I'm going to just try and take one out to have a look at. I'll do this off camera, I'm afraid. I'll just pull one out. I don't want to... Uh, you can see that they're held into the um, plastic holder by a piece of tape. So... Let's just peel the tape off for one of these LEDs. Ah, wow, these are tiny. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Um, where's my tweezers? Uh, right, there we go. I don't even know if this is going to focus. I think it might do, just about. I'll take my glasses off. Uh... So there we have one of the LEDs, and you can see on this one, it is, it's got a green end to it. So I can turn it around the other way. Now, actually, on the other side, it has got a green triangle. 
And the green triangle tells us that, if we look at the, there you go, green triangle. So the point of the triangle, if you like, is negative, and the other end is positive, but the actual chip, the bit that lights up, is on this side. So you can see where the triangle is pointing that's the point there. If you turn it over, you can see ooh, it's green. So that green end is negative, which means it will go on the board that way round, like that. Oh man, this is going to be interesting. I'm trying to solder that with my dirty great solder and iron. Let's give it a go. Okay, well, the best way to tackle this is, as is typical, to first of all tin one of the pads like that, and then using the tweezers and making sure I've got it the right way around, I can barely see this LED. Let alone solder the ruddy thing in. Good God. This is madness. Right. So that's the way round that it goes. I mean, it's stuck to me bloody. Oh, there we go. So. It's kind of lined up. So. Grab soldering on, grab the LED, and then offer it up. Try and straighten it a bit. And that's that side in. So now, what I need to do is solder the other LED. Now I am going to have to get my magnifying glass involved here. I don't know how well you can see that. If I can focus in on that, but there you go. So hopefully that's it. So now that lack of focus. And there she is. One soldered LED. As I say, you can see there, that's the green. And that's the negative, so green to negative. So I'm going to do this row. And they were all, what colour was that? I think it was red, wasn't it? Yes, they were red. So I'm going to finish that particular column there, and um, then we'll uh, see how it goes. We'll try the uh, the green next, I think. So let me get that uh, column of reds in first. Okay, so I've got the uh, first row of LEDs in, if that'll focus up. <coughs> and they went in quite easily. Um, and the other thing I've done is I've gone across the whole board and I have put a blob of solder on one of the contacts of each of the remaining positions just, just to speed things up a little bit to try and get all of these in. So like I said before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, well that's a row of red, then I'm going to do green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. So um, I'll just have a quick look at the green LEDs and from what I can see um, they are basically the same marking as you can see there, the same marking as the red ones. So I'm guessing that um, it could be that there are different types of LEDs and depending on which type they happen to put in the kit 
in my case it's that type um, then they've got the alternatives there depending on what you get but the most important thing is you know where uh, minus and plus is which is what this diagram tells you so with that in mind I'm going to populate this board with all the LEDs and um, hopefully without um, uh, any disasters we shall see right so the LEDs are now all installed and uh, you can see that and I think I've got them all the right way around zoom in a little bit more they're not all particularly straight um, but they are all soldered in um, like I say these are very very tiny um, yeah it's got some nasty solder peaks there but what are you gonna do but I think they'll be okay we'll find out now next thing to do is to look at the other components that we have so let's go back to the uh, go back to the diagram and uh, we can see that we've got a fairly major chip here which is surface mount and that's likely to be uh, the most difficult to sort out we've got another little one down here um, which shouldn't be quite so problematic um, so rather than put all these other um, passive components in down here I'm going to focus on getting that chip in um, because that's going to be the trickiest beastie um, and uh, we'll see how that goes right so this is the chip in question and you will see hopefully somewhere that there is a little dot in the top left hand corner there and if you look at the PCB there is a notch in the silk screen of where the chip is and that is where the dot needs to go so the correct orientation for it will be like that um, so what I'm going to do as I do with all the uh, surface mounts, is to start off by simply tinning one of the pads just to lock the chip down. So we'll, we'll do that now. Boom, that's all we need. And then, somehow, I'm going to uh, just solder that one pin. Now, usefully, the actual, there we go, that's dropped it down. I'm just trying to straighten it up and also try not to put too much heat on the chip because uh, that can cause all sorts of mayhem. Okay, so let's just press down on that one more time, make sure it's down. <clears throat> so that's the chip locked down with at least one pin. Uh, there's that, hopefully you can see there. And also, you can see that there's actually quite a lot of pad area for each of those pins. So, I'm hoping, you can see the pins are pretty flat against the board. I'm going to get the focus down here a bit. Uh, no, I think. Oh, there we go. Um, so, hopefully, this will be reasonably easy to solder. <clears throat> to try and make things a little more successful, or potentially more successful, I'm going to use some flux. I'm just going to wipe a bit of that on the pins, just there. Let's do that side, start off with. And then 
Uh, the lighting may go a bit funny here because what I want to do is bring my magnifying glass in, which may mean you can't see so well. I think you'll be okay, but we'll see. And then I'm just going to dab a blob of solder on each pen. Not too much, just enough. Have a look at that. What do we think? That, uh, let me first of all look at it off camera so I can get an idea. I think they'll be okay. One of the things it's probably worth doing is again not wanting to leave the heat on it too long, but um, just uh, flick, flick the solder up a bit just to. Uh, make sure that we get a good contact on each pin. Oh, and there's a bridge. Um, I can flick that out of the way. There we go. Right, now the other thing I do, <coughs> particularly with these SMD components, because they are so small, is, if I can find it, use a jeweler's loop. Uh, preferably a clean one, that one's disgusting. I have to clean that up a bit. And uh, I don't know if I can show you. There you go, possibly. No, it isn't going to work anyway. I'm going to stick that on my eye. And I uh, appreciate this is off camera, but uh, I'm going to look at each one of those pins in glorious ten times magnification, noting that for some bizarre reason, which is why you want to check it with these, uh, we'll give it a nice close check, but for some bizarre reason, I seem to have decided not to solder the final pin. I think possibly because I'm an idiot. But we use that as the explanation, right? Let's check that. Now, hand on my heart, I would say that all of those pins are soldered. So we're going to do the same on this side. Good, I hope this works. I've got this round the right way. Yeah, there's dots in the right place. Okay. And why is that not working? This soldering iron, iron gets very, very hot. I do wonder actually if it's a bit too hot. I need to get the magnifier back on again. That's half the problem. I can't see what I'm doing. Again, apologies if you're off camera. I don't think you are. I can't talk and solder at the same time. Just flicking the solder downwards away from the chip like that, and hopefully that last one wants to play silly buggers. Right there we go, and I think that's okay. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is again get the magnifier out, and I think. I think that end pin again just needs a bit of a flick to get the solder right onto the pin. Like that. Yeah, that's looking good. 
So there we go. That's how I, any rate, um, solder an SMD component. The other thing I do is I use some, uh, let's zoom out a bit, some uh, isopropyl, isopropanol alcohol, pure alcohol, which is basically nail remover or something like that. Uh, put a bit on the cotton bud and then just wipe it on the board. And what that will do is it will clean up all the flux. Make it look pretty. And of course, being alcohol, it will just evaporate away after a bit. Like that. So it will uh, hopefully look a little bit nicer, a little bit neater. So you get the idea, at any rate, with um, soldering these uh, surface mount components. Um, and as with the, um, the LEDs, I've got a whole bunch of um, resistors here and capacitors that need soldering as well. I first just tip all these out. All these good bits and pieces. Is that all of them? Yep. So uh, we've got um, surface mount, push to make button, another tiny chip, which is probably what I'll do next, but I'm not going to show you uh, show you uh, me soldering that because it's exactly the same principle. A couple of uh, surface mount caps, electrolytic caps, a uh, mini USB um, jack, and as I say, we've got some resistors. What are these? These are one zero zero so that's is that 10 ohms 100 ohms i don't know 100 no 10 i think i don't know is it 10 ohms i can never remember how this numbering works i'm sure people watching are shouting it out at me um but uh yeah i think we're tying but the good thing is you don't even need to know the values because on the um, uh, on the instructions it just tells you which ones go where. But again, in terms of how you solder them, it's exactly the same principle as we did with the LEDs. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate that board. Um, the electrolytic caps, by the way, you'll see that... Um, there's a black mark on the cap there and you just need to put it make sure it's on that side so that's the negative side so it'll go it's, it's, it's either this one or that one it goes on i can't remember but i'll, I'll double check that in a minute but the principle's the same so black goes to black if you like uh, and that tiny chip again we've got a I can get this around the right way. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. So we've got a notch there in the uh, uh, in the silk screen, and we've got a little dot on the corner of the chip. So that means it will go in like that. So I'm going to put that one in. <clears throat> I've got some capacitors there. Resistor, resistor, capacitor, capacitor. Another capacitor there. And lots and lots and lots of resistors. And all the other good stuff. So I'm going to get all of those soldered in. And I'll get back to you. Right. Okay. So all the LEDs are installed, as I said before. And now we have completely populated the rear of the device. Uh, including the speaker, which came with uh, two wires, which were um, free, uh, which were loose, so they'd just been soldered on. Uh, noting that um, this side of the speaker is the positive, that side is the negative, and they go to the positive and negative pads 
on the PCB. So it's all ready to be powered up to see if it works. So with the magic of mini USB with five volts on the other end, let's see what happens. Plug it in. Ooh, like bang. Ah. And nothing. Well, that kind of makes sense because I suppose it does need um, a sound source to make them flash. So let's have a look at the. Ah, okay. Right, well, there is actually. Oh, look. It's kind of flashing there. What was going on there? That's me unplugging it. There is a button, and I kind of got this upside down, actually. I say it's upside down, because that's just where the writing is there. But yeah, it was probably upside down. So whether it makes a difference or not, I don't know. But um, I think what it says, just let me check again. Press and hold the touch switch first, then ch Okay, right, so what you're supposed to do is on the back, you've got a button there. And to test, this, this is a test function of some sort. So you, you hold the button and then you put the power to it. Oh, there we go, look at that. So, so I think you've got, probably got to keep the button held. And that is testing all the LEDs, I guess. My take on that is that all the LEDs are functioning correctly. We've got the red, uh, red, green, blue, red, green, blue pattern on the front. So that's worked out okay. And they're very bright, these little LEDs. They are so tiny. Um, okay, so if I let go of the button, what happens? Boom. Okay, fair enough. That's doing everything it should do. So I'm happy with that. Let's take the power out. Um, the audio, this, this is actually the lead that it comes with. And you see that it caters for both audio and micro USB. So I'm guessing that that goes into an audio source and it starts flashing. However, we haven't quite got there yet. So what I need to do next is to build up the case that it comes with. So let's take all of that out. Now, these things are a little bit like the Krypton Factor. Apologies if you don't know what I mean by the Krypton Factor. Google it. And um, there's some, as always, there's always a few components left over, which we can keep. If we uh, lose components in another kit later on, so it's always useful to get to hang on to these, which I always do. Um, so I've got a little bag here actually of um, parts from other kits that I've put together so I'm going to leave all of those there and I shall keep those and put them in my little stash. Um, but this is the, the case that it comes with and as is typical with these kits they are manufactured from acrylic um, and they're clear plastic acrylic but what they do is that they protect during transportation and all the rest of it with this paper backing so you can see underneath the clear plastic and uh, yeah so um, I don't think you need to see me put this together it's, it's be honest it's guesswork half the time how it goes together but you've got a little bag of nuts and screws to hold it to hold it together once you've got it assembled um, Probably going to be a little bit tricky getting it all together with the uh, the speaker <coughs> uh, that needs to be fitted. Um, but there you go. We shall uh, we shall see. So give me a minute and I'll put that together. Right. Well, I've got it all wired up, um, despite all the mess everywhere. Clear up the thing. Right. So the case is on. Um, unfortunately, it seems to have been a bit damaged during transit. But there we go. Never mind. And you see that it's got some... Hmm. One of the problems is I've got the uh, uh, 
that the speaker isn't mounted. It probably needs a, um, a double-sided sticky pad or something, but it's just sort of flapping them out loose in there, but never mind. Um, but any rate, so we've got the cable that it came with, which is a combination of uh, mini USB, and also it goes to a headphone jack or a stereo plug. And I've just got a little... Um, uh, dab radio here which I've plugged it into and the idea is that's where it gets its audio source from uh, and also you can actually split that audio source with the supplied splitter so I guess you could have the audio in and the audio out there or whatever at any rate but it's got its, 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 uh, its own speaker so let me turn up the volume and I am conscious of the fact that uh, I don't really want to be uh, um, sanctioned for playing somebody else's music, but I'm just going to turn up the volume so you can see. There you go. I like someone who's just, uh, well, remained anonymous, but just texted mm. in going, wow, bring it. There you go. I think that's, we'll be bringing uh, it all the way up to 9 o'clock, anonymous person. All right, so I'm just going to turn that off. Um, <clears throat> but you can see it works, and it's got lots of flashing lights, and it looks really cool, and it works. That's the main thing. So... Uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. It does does the job. Um, well, I say it does the job. I've got absolutely no use for this whatsoever. Um, the idea of having uh, a little display that makes LEDs jump up and down when you put an audio source into them is of no use to me whatsoever. Uh, but it's not about use. It's about having the fun and, and uh, entertainment of putting together these electronic kits and seeing them work at the end of the day. And this one does work. And I'm very, uh, very pleased about that too. So there we go. That's uh, the S Music Spectrum kit. Um, and all is working. Fabulous. Hope you enjoyed that video. A um, bit long, I know. But uh, uh, we got there in the end. And um, we've uh, I've got some more kits coming. Uh, and uh, we'll put those up. Uh, as soon as I've made them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this vid. Uh, we'll catch you again soon. Cheers.